Welcome to A Cup of Joe with, with Joe. Uh, today we're going to talk about something incredibly exciting, the second law of thermodynamics. Um, not many people know that there are actually four laws of thermodynamics, but at first we only numbered, numbered them up to three because we, we forgot one. Oops. And so when we realized we needed another one, it, it wasn't important enough to be the fourth, and it really laid the fundamentals. So and we didn't want to renumber everything because all of the textbooks had already been printed, and, and, and so they near, they, we named it the zeroth law. Now, this happened you know, more than a half a century before I was born. They didn't call me to ask, but I would have told them I think it was unnecessary to actually have the zeroth law. The zeroth law basically says if A equals B and B equals C, A equals C. There is a dead Greek by the name of Aristotle. He wrote it down uh, way before any of this stuff, uh, but apparently to the Germans at the time it was all Greek to them. <sighs> okay, anyway, the zeroth law is what I just told you. The first law is of thermodynamics is are the conservation laws. The second one is the interesting one. I'll talk about that. And the third one says that there's an absolute, absolute zero. Now, the second law, to me, is the most important for architects, general contractors, and engineers in the construction industry. But man, they just teach it horribly in school. And let me let me tell you how what the second law actual language is. In an isolated system, a process can occur only if it increases the total entropy of the system. Nobody freaking knows what that means. It's crazy. And it sounds worse in the original German when Clausius first said it in the 1880s. Let me, let me translate this to you. Heat moves from warm to cold. Why? Because. Well, because of the second law, but we just use the word because. Moisture moves from warm to cold. Why? Because. Moisture moves from more to less. Why? Because. Air flow, air moves from a higher pressure to a lower pressure. Why? Because. That, folks, was the second law translated into something useful. So this is pretty straightforward. Now. Think about this. The most important thing that we want to really deal with with the second law is moisture, and there are two components to that. Moisture is from warm to cold and from more to less. Most of the time, they act in the same direction. But every now and then, they act in opposite directions, in which case, more to less beats warm to cold. Rock beats scissors, paper beats rock, more to less beats warm to cold. Now, it's very easy for a normal human being, like an architect, well, okay, an engineer, yeah, okay, all right, it's mostly easy for people to go into a building and figure out what part is going to be warm and what part is going to be cold. Most people can look at a set of drawings and say, this part is going to be warm and this part is going to be cold. What it really tells you is that most of the time, the moisture ends up on the cold spot. Now, normal people can't go in and feel intuitively vapor pressure differences. But, and those that can also see dead people. So what we do is we use cold and warm to cold as a surrogate for more to less, because most of the time in reality, the moisture ends up on the cold spot. It's, it's amazing. So let's say you live in Canada. There are only two seasons in Canada, this winter and last winter. The inside is warm, the outside is cold, the moisture is moving from the inside to the outside. Let's say you're in Florida and in Texas and Louisiana. You have something called air conditioning. The inside is cold and the outside is warm and wet. The moisture is going to go from the outside to the inside. That's why in cold climates, it's not a good idea 
to have a vapor barrier on the outside if that vapor barrier is cold. Now you can have a vapor barrier on the outside of your framing in a cold climate if you put a lot of uh, insulation to the outside of it to make it warm enough not to cause a problem, not complicated. In the south, in air conditioned buildings, it's a really dumb idea to put something that's impermeable on the inside, like vinyl wall coverings. Vinyl wall coverings are vapor barriers. They cause mold in air conditioned buildings, except in Vegas. Well, why? What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? No, there's no moisture outside. So you can do stupid things in Vegas because it's dry, among other factors. Uh, everywhere else, and east of Interstate 35 in Texas and south of the Mason-Dixon line, if you have a vapor barrier on the inside in an air-conditioned building, you're in for a lot of trouble. You can have the same thing, same problem with, for example, epoxy paint or oil-based coatings or paints on the inside. They don't breathe either. So it'd be a really bad idea to build a hospital with gypsum board on the inside and coat it with oil-based coatings. If you hang pictures on the wall in the south, the pictures usually have glass over them. That's a vapor barrier. You have to back ventilate them. Uh, the French figured this out in the Louvre, their art gallery, not their bathrooms. They would hang pictures with corks, creating the space behind them. The cork is 19 millimeters in diameter. That's an important thing. That's what gap you want if you want to hang expensive artwork in an air-conditioned building south of the Mason-Dixon line in the United States. What about hanging kitchen cabinets? Well, cabinets used to be made out of something called wood. Now they're made out of was wood. It was wood once, it ain't wood anymore. It's ground up who knows what with goopy stuff and they're vapor bearers. So you're going to get mold if you hang closets or hang cupboards on the interior of exterior walls unless you back ventilate the cupboard. The people that manufacture these things now realize that and that's why they make the sides longer than the tops and the bottom so that when you hang them you have a ventilated airspace behind them. And the really clever ones that counter it, the, the cupboards and counters that actually sit on the floor don't have a back to them. And you sort of say, well, those cheap buggers, they didn't even have enough money to put on the back. And I'm saying, no, those are really smart people. They took the back off so the wall can dry into that and they have it dry at the kick out, at the toe kick. Magnificent stuff. Well, what about not having a vapor barrier at all? Awesome, we would call that a flow through assembly. The wall can dry to the outside, the wall can dry to the inside. That's a wall that goes both ways. And I'm going to not go there any further because I don't want to irritate the defensemen that play both directions. Anyway, with that, see you again for another cup of joe.